All right, today we're gonna take a look at the Flux image creator here at Pixel Dojo. You can find this over in the Create tab, go down to Flux Creator, and you'll notice a couple of things right off the bat. You've got the left-hand menu on the side, you can collapse that. And then right here in the middle, you've got where your generated images will appear. And on the right-hand side, you have this column that has all of the different settings you can use to generate your images. Now, obviously the first thing at the top is your prompt. So you can type something like a dragon eating a bowl of spaghetti. And then you have a couple of other options. You have the model dropdown. So this is where you select the Flux model that you wanna use. You have Flux Schnell, Schnell Laura. This is for use with Laura models, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Hyperflux 8 and 16. This is an eight step and a 16 step version of Flux that's made by ByteDance, the people behind TikTok. You have Flux Pro, Flux Pro 1.1, Pro 1.1 Ultra, and then you have a couple of Loras. So you have Flux Dev Realism and you have Flux Dev Laura. We'll go through each one of these and what they mean in a little bit, but this just gives you sort of a layout of the land. Next is this Enhanced Prompt Features. So this actually uses artificial intelligence on the back end, and anything you type in the prompt here is going to be used as guidance to help form a better picture. So what you do is you click the Enhanced Prompt Feature. We'll go ahead and do that now says enhancing and what it does is it takes whatever you've typed in the prompt box and it uses that as a foundation to build a better more enhanced prompt for you you can see prompt enhanced successfully so now it says create an ultra realistic image of a majestic dragon it scales shimmering and the hues of twilight you can see it's very very detailed compared to what you had before so oftentimes you can use this to create a better image than you would have on your own in the middle here, you've got aspect ratio. This is the size of the image or the aspect ratio of the image that you want to create. You have everything from Instagram portrait, ultra wide, widescreen. And this does change slightly depending on the model selected. Some models don't work with specific aspect ratios. Next up, we've got number of images to generate. You can go up to four images at a time. That's going to generate, as it states here, four images in one go. And then you've got the select the LoRa. We'll talk about that, as I said, a little bit later. The next piece you want to go through is the advanced options. And this, again, also varies per model. So you have things like the number of steps. Since we have Flux Schnell selected, it's just a four-step model, so you can only do one through four steps. This is the number of times that the AI model actually loops over or enhances the image as it tries to create that final image that adheres to the prompt that you provided. And then you also have guidance scale. Again, this only works for certain models. Flux Schnell does not support guidance scale. But for models that do support guidance scale, this is really how much the overall image, how much the AI model, the actual image model, adheres to the prompt. So higher guidance scales typically will follow your prompt more closely, but you might have more artifacting. You might have worse quality images as a result. Usually the default is fine. Some people find that having a lower guidance scale produces slightly more realistic images and having a higher guidance scale adheres to the prompt slightly better. And then the last one is seed. So the seed is a random number that's used to generate an image. This is what's used to create the initial noise that stable diffusion and diffusion models use to start generating an image. So it's a random number by default, but if you wanna recreate an image precisely, you can reuse the same seed. You would just select manual instead of automatic, and you can paste in any seed value you want here. It's nice for repeatability. If you create an image and you love the image and you want to recreate it again, but maybe with slightly different guidance scale or a slightly different prompt, you can reuse that same seed so that you get a similar image in the end. All right, and with that out of the way, let's go ahead and generate our first images. So we're going to do four images. We're using Flux Schnell and we've got this enhanced prompt, so you can see what I'm talking about here. And you can see they all come back really quickly. And even though this is Flux Schnell, this is the lowest end of the Flux models, you see the quality on some of these is actually quite good. I really like this first one, in fact. And you can see it's a dragon eating a bowl of spaghetti. So you have a few options here. You can click on the download button. This downloads the image to your PC or to your Mac. The images by default are not stored on my servers. They're generated, and unless you save it or you download it, they just disappear. So 
you can either download the image to your own computer or you can click on the save button. That's gonna save it to your My Images section, which we'll go over here in a bit. The other option is save and upscale. I have an upscaler built into the system and so you can save it and you can send the image directly over to the creative upscaler. Flux Schnell is the smallest of the Flux models. This is the fastest model, but it also typically produces the worst results. Now, saying worst is sort of not giving the model enough credit because it's actually a really high quality model in itself. So this is something that a lot of us use to create really fast iterations of images and to just test out new ideas and concepts. The Hyperflux 8 and 16, a lot of people really like the quality of these. You can take a look at Flux 16 here and we'll generate four images for this as well. And it's a really high quality model, even though it's only 16 steps. So it's still relatively fast, but it's nice high quality. And you can see here in the middle, some of these models, when you create images, when you create multiple images at a time, it does use credits. So with Pixel Dojo, you get 400 credits per month. That's your base for your $25 a month subscription. You can purchase more credits at any time. And most of the models don't use credits. So if you select just one image, you can see zero credits. Flux Teen doesn't use any credits. Hyperflux 8 doesn't. And Flux Schnell does not either. The higher end models, those are more expensive for me to run. These have really insanely high computational costs to them. So Flux Pro, Flux Ultra. And so you'll see that those do cost one credit per image generation. Now you can see here from the results, it's a quite nice image that comes back from Flux Hyper 16. So we'll go ahead and save a couple of these too. That gives you kind of the basics. There are a couple other things to note. Flux Pro, Pro 1.1, and Pro Ultra do not allow not safe for work images to be generated, or at least not fully. They have some sort of censorship built in. I have no insights into that. No one else does either. These are models that are closed source. They're backed by Black Forest Labs. We have to actually use their APIs in order to generate images with them. Flux Schnell and Flux Dev are slightly smaller models, Flux Dev specifically, those can generate a wide range of images and they don't have those built-in sort of safety checks that the other models do, so they're a lot more flexible. The other thing to note about Flux Dev and Flux Schnell is they have LoRa support, which is low rank adaptation. This is how you train a model that looks like a specific person, object, or a place, a location, a style. And so what you can see here is if you scroll down, you have my custom models, and I've created a few custom models, custom trained LoRa's over the past few months. You can see anything from the test cyber taxi. Uh, I have one of my dog. I even have some of uh, some cartoon characters, so Vector from Despicable Me. And if you select one of these, we'll go ahead and click on it. You can see that it puts this, this thing called a trigger or a token word into the prompt box. This is the trigger or token that's used to generate images using this LoRa model. And so now I can say, lounging around in a chair. You can go ahead and click generate, and you can see it's automatically, since we selected a LoRa, it's chose Flux Dev LoRa as the model that it's using. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that LoRa model, it's gonna load it into the bigger model, the Flux Dev model, and it's gonna use that to generate images that look like the person, in this case, Vector from Despicable Me, that we've asked it to produce. And here you can see the result, looks just like Vector from the movie, and you could make him do just about anything. So you go to the enhance prompt, and you could use AI to actually enhance this prompt, create different variations, whatever you wanna do. But the really cool thing here is, this is extremely powerful. If you wanna create any character, any person, any place, location, style, setting, whatever, you can do that using the Flux LoRa models. And these are available in the community gallery. You can go to the community gallery, you can select models. There's a whole list to browse from, or you can train your own. If you go down to the training tab here, you see the Flux model trainer over here in the menu. We'll talk about that in a different video, but that gives you an idea of what you can do here. You can also use third-party LoRa's. So you can use a LoRa from Civit AI, for example, or from Hugging I typically prefer using Hugging Face. It's a lot more reliable. I found that Civit AI tends to block 
access to their lower models on a semi-regular basis. And so that causes a lot of problems for customers. So what you can do is you can just X off of this LoRa. And in the dropdown, we'll go back and we'll select Flux Dev LoRa. Select a LoRa and you can just say custom LoRa URL. And this is where you would just come in here and you would paste in the URL to a specific LoRa that you'd like to use from another site. And let's go ahead and find one. In this case, we went to Hugging Face and we have this Avomatic Comic Book V2. And you can see right here at the top is the name of the model and there's this copy button. We're gonna go ahead and copy that. Then we're gonna jump back over to the Flux LoRa and we're just gonna paste that in. You can see that's right there. So now you've got this custom LoRa card and then it has that one pasted in there. We'll go ahead and select our prompt and we'll just say an anime man. And we'll go ahead and click on generate. Now, each one of the lores that you use might have a different trigger word or token. This one's a style, so it doesn't so much have a trigger or token word. It just applies a certain style or aesthetic to the overall image. And you'll see that here in a sec. And here you can see the result. This is with the lore applied. Uh, you can also add multiple LoRa's. So as you can see here, add another custom LoRa. You can add up to 20 LoRa's for a single image. So if you wanted to go really well, add a whole bunch of different styles and objects and that sort of thing, that's easy enough to do here as well. Now, one thing to note, it is incredibly difficult to get two people into a single image using the Fusion models. Flux, unfortunately, is no different. So if you train two LoRa's of two different people, it's gonna be really difficult to get those both people in a single image. Typically the people end up looking like some sort of hybrid between each other, almost like they're related, they're siblings. So that's one caveat. You're gonna to have to use different tools that we've got built into the system here in order to accomplish that. But this should give you a really good, nice high overview of the Flux image creator and what you can do with it. As always, let me know if you have any questions or comments in the Discord channel or right here on YouTube. Thank you so much.